Hello and Allahu Apa, the Baha'i greeting to everyone in the planet. My name is Abbas Namori. Time is 11.29, the 1st of the December of 2012. I'll be around for another month on this uh, YouTube business. And I have a few more topics to cover. I've been ordered to talk about China and people of China and the nation of China. It's a Chinese nation. It's a very uh, <coughs> special in the history of mankind. The way we are raised in the West, I'm one of you, I came here, I don't know when I was 25, 26, 30 years in the West. I've always watched the media, TV, radio people. They all like to think they're the best Canadian Americans, uh, as opposed to the people of the East, like China or India, even before you know, Russia. And you know they accuse them of uh, a lot of things, and they see themselves the heroes and the best Americans and Canadian alike. And I've been in India, and I've been in Iran, and I've seen they had the same stories about America back there. David, uh, when I was a kid, they used to call me a treasonist. They tell me that everything you watch is American, a book you read American, you just love America, the movies, the book, now you want to speak the language, now you change your religion. So. They were thinking that, uh, they were teaching us, you know, that uh, Americans or Canadian, white people in general, Western, have no chastity about their wives, children, they're cruel. I came here so everything is uh, totally wrong. So, the fact is that we have to raise, you know, the bar and we change from the environment that we are in affected by the media and everything else. In this case, I'll be talking about, let's say, China. I hear it every day. Chinese are stealing our jobs. Chinese are responsible for all the problems we have, and so on and so forth. And if you talk to a few people that they know something, they prove it to you that uh, Mao Tse Dong, for example, was a serious dictator, uh, was, you know, bloodthirst, man who killed uh, thousands of people, millions literally, which is all true, he didn't, but it was a part of their uh, getting to the power and putting the China together. And uh, for example, in his battle, I remember after Sun Yat-sen is this Chiang Kai-shek, uh, and uh, Mao Tse Sedong for some time they united uh, against their enemies and then they went back and they fight over it and uh, Mao Tse Sedong won and a lot of people died. Oh. Yeah, I remember the word of uh, our president, Barack Obama. He was mentioning this phrase I remember from him. When I was talking about Americans, the slavery, and racism towards the black people. He said a glory that's irrevocably bound to a tragic past. Yes. So all these things are okay about the Chinese and how this power, the present power has reached there, cost a few million lives to get here. Uh, but America or even Canada is not exempted. One worst. Like in Canada, have you, not even 50, 60 years ago, Canadian government, one of the most civilized government in the world, I vouch for it now, at the time, along with the Anglican Church, I don't know if Catholic Church was involved too, they were actually kidnapping the natives from their villages by the airplanes, bring them into the churches, forcing them to speak English and be Christians. Can anything be worse than that? That you're kidnapped from your mom and dad as a child, or your child is 
Yes, we've done it here in Canada. Haven't been U.S. and England, the mother country, been involved for years in slavery. So many thousands of African American children, or young people, husband, whatever, especially youth, they were kidnapped from Africa. You white people, you bought them here and made them to work for you for free. Is there anything worse than that? How about the uh, civil war? where Abraham Lincoln had to become the rebel against his own country to get rid of the problem. Go read it. The massacres and the slaughters of people, American by Americans, way beyond this thing. So, if we want to look at the Chinese to say that, you know, they are all this and that, they're dictators, so look at ourselves, you know. The old teaching of Jesus Christ in the Bible, you know. You don't see the tree in your eyes, and you see little things in the you know, eye of your uh, other people. Look at the English when they went to China. They introduced opium to the people. How many, you know, it's dirty. That's it. It's glorious, maybe now, but it's irrevocably bound to a tragic past. That's the Obama's word. So what do we do now? Let's just be positive and look at the positive things that has happened. As I always look positively at the US, at Canada, at Anglo-Saxons, and I'm very hopeful because I see there's a trend of uh, uh, successive evolution, progressive, you know, uh, process. It's progressing, you know, it's not retrogressive. It's not retrogressive at all. So, if we look at it really, in a right way, the China and the Chinese and the government of China are way more civilized than us. What civilization? Thinking, inventing, and bringing things. I was looking at uh, uh, the list of the inventions, the list of the inventions of, uh, in China. The Chinese, you know, contributions. I just got a few of them to tell you. There's a, hundreds of them. You all know the paper, the printing, compass, and gunpowder is the sort of four major ones. Uh, even silk that I know. It's all from China. They were they are the one that invented it. But for example, did you know the pottery? According to this uh, Wikipedia. Riches they have found that it goes 20,000 years ago. Mesopotamia is only six, seven thousand years ago. Even the pyramids are 3,500. 20,000 years ago, there was civilization in China that pottery is formed, you know. They were cultivating rice 12,000 years before Christ, some 14,000 years ago. You know, many things. Cast iron, but 500 years before Jesus Christ, they were cast iron. That the plow, the steel plow, but they count to plow the field. 3,500 years before Christ, they knew what silk is and they were harvesting it, you know. Chinese silk is amazing, really. The fabrics, 6,000 years before Christ. They knew this salt term that you know, like sift the, the soil and separate the salt. They, they produced salt 6,000 years ago before Christ. So a few hundred years before Christ is written here, uh, they had, uh, they were actually drilling holes, like some uh, really deep in the ground. And they were putting these bamboos and they were getting the gas out of the ground and uh, firing the furnaces. This is a couple centuries before Christianity. Chrome, you know, the chromium that we put on the metals and things like that was around that time. So uh, they had water canal, like the Panama, Panama Canal or the Red Sea. 
Iranian day, uh, King uh, uh, Zaraxas, I think, the third one of the Achaemenids. He did it that the uh, Suez Canal was made by Iranian. Around the same times, they had this canal made in, in China, they were that. For God's sake, acupuncture, zodiac, seismometer. That's pretty crazy. They could, you know, understand. Again, a few hundred years before Christ, if there's an earthquake coming, they could see the shakes in the ground. Uh, that's crazy. I was reading that ephedrine, which I think Merck got it lately from China and uh, giving it to all of us. The ephedrine, it has been by the Han Dynasty some 200 years before Christ. So, um, in the 6th century, you can see the wrought iron gets mixed with the uh, uh, iron to create uh, steel, the steel that we have. It's written that uh, they had forensic in 10th century. Some uh, farmer dies and I think it's uh, the sickle even, that they uh, harvest their wheat. And they brought him and uh, the sickle, or they, they determined it was done by the sickle. So they decided to get all the farmers and to bring their sickles on the floor and around. We knew which one belongs to who. Then as they were putting all these things, exposed to flies. Where would fly sits? On the sickle that there's blood on it. It was cleaned up, but still flies would recognize it. Then they knew, based on that, where is this belong to, and they caught the guy. Forensic. That's very, very, very clever. Oh. They had cast iron bomb. In the 12th centuries, the Song dynasties that they were using, you know, the Mongol hordes. So, it's just to give you a couple of ideas, but go on the website and get the list. There's thousands of things made by them. And then, when you look at the statistics between, let's say, China and uh, America, I'm bringing the two together again, you write on the internet, it's not my own. This is divorce in America is number one. Chinese are 19th. Way, 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 way more divorces in U.S. than in China. Bribing in U.S. it says 100% more than China. Drug offenses 140 times more than people in China. Murder 160. Eight times more than China is taking place in the U.S. There's 30% more prisoner in the U.S. than China. The emission, CO2, U.S. is five times more than China. Pollution, gas, you know, green. Pollution with a car. 103% more than China. So who is more civilized? What is civilization? You see, these are the statistics, they don't lie. So, as we can see, China has contributed greatly towards the civilization and for what they are. Right now, when we look at it, the human right index and everything else, Chinese are much more calmer, more civilized. They don't have this stress and craziness that we are experiencing in the West. The essence of the formations of the US or Canada or, or as Anglo-Saxons was basically because they came from the Europe. They built these countries as a mixture of many races. China did the same thing, but by not leaving 
from China to another place, but by leaving behind all this old Buddhism and Confucius and all those thoughts of the past by this cultural revolution. They migrated, left behind all the past to create a modern based scientific society. They don't believe in religion of the past as it is. So, uh, I personally, <clears throat> uh, even before I was a Baha'i, I uh, had a lot of reverence for Mao Tessadon. Again, I'm, I'm a man that looks at a positive person. He has done a lot of positive things for the people in China. That the present China, uh, it owes him. He turned China into a team as opposed to mass. You put the basis for it, you see. Aldous Huxley has this little discussion that I've heard from him, I read from him in my college years, that in the mass is disorganized. It goes everywhere. A team is organized. Army is a team. City is a mass. And how much more power is in the team? Things get done faster. So Mao Tse-Tung brought China into a team as an organist because he had a sound philosophy. This part of his philosophy was very right. It totally is according to the Baha'i faith. He says the whole nation, now I was referring to China as nation, that the whole nation is an organic being. We have to serve him, we have to uh, sacrifice our life for it before you know, rule it, before you go on the top. So this idea of the collective that he had, and knew the collective has to be correct, that is why it's almost like a surgery. He had to get rid of a lot of parts that were not useful in creating this collective. Well, let's bring dictatorship, there's no doubt. But, you know, we can call it dictatorship. But in reality, it has a lot of good things for the people as well. Bad things as well, but the good things is, you know, much more. I look at him as one of the great transformers of the uh, civilization of today. And of course, he had a lot of good and bad things. A lot of crazy things talks about him, if you read, you know, deep. So, China is winning. China is winning because the underlying philosophy of this nation is organization. A man who is not organized, can budgets his time and money and effort, is a loser. China, collectively, <coughs> is very much organized. <clears throat> People are like cells. <clears throat> Everyone knows what to do. They're a part of the collective. And they are very uh, content. This contentment they have and the discipline, it's winning. We've seen them in the West. This is the reason they're winning. Because in China, you have to be disciplined. Too many population in a room. Every time you have to walk slowly, walk properly, not hit others. You have to be watchful, much more watchful than you are anyone else. So that's why they don't have this kind of a habits of drinking habits, of smoking habits, drug habits. God, they don't have these things at all. But read some of the uh, things for you. So. Um, But in the West, uh, we know, we say a lot of things about China, that they're responsible for stealing jobs, for creation of Walmarts, and so much so, you know, that we're all, 
basically losing our job to them, everybody. But you gotta understand this though, a little bit of the economy, if you want, only underground or the background of some social studies that for a thriving economy in the US, which their export is more than Chinese in the US actually, uh, the US wants to produce, it wants, uh, it has to have customers. Chinese are customers of the US goods as well. You make your customers to lose, poor, they can't buy your goods. At one point when the population was a lot less in the US and whatnot, it was a different story. Now it's changing, it's getting bigger. You want to get all the people in the US to work to be on the top, they got to be careful about everybody in the world. Like predators, you can't kill all your prey. You have to make them to thrive in order to be able to buy, isn't it? So, we have to understand it is equilibriums, not attacking them. It's no good. You see? In the West, <clears throat> we look at democracy, personal freedom. We look at it as the biggest gift, you know, that ever produced, you know, by us. But democracy and this freedom and the free enterprise also unleash all the predators, all the capitalists. They come in. Their nature is to kill others, to eat others. Then, in this society, they are allowed to lure people, to cheat people, to get them to smoke, to get them to eat McDonald's. Their cholesterol goes high. The whole thing, there's no regulations, free enterprise. This is where the sick nations, the nations in the US and Canada. It's all because there was no leash put on this pr uh, productivity of a lot of wrong things. So, yeah, freedom. Freedom of who? Of majority? Of everyone? Of everyone? Okay, if they're free, what does a free tiger do? Eats. Eat the, you know, weak ones. Even Karl Marx was saying that there's no way capitalism can continue because um, at one point they have, um, there's not enough people to cheat anymore and to exploit anymore. So it ends up being socialistic. Americans, you know, they invented their way out of this. They said, okay, we're not going to eat all the American monies. We're going to eat the world. We're going to make a team out of American workers and the big, huge, you know, imperialistic businesses. Together, all as a team, we're going to go eat the rest of the world. And they did for so many years. But finally, at one day, all this people, will they come back? They forced the freedom over Russia and China. Okay, they got the message. Now they're free. So what? Now they're competitions. Isn't it? So, in China, under what we see as dictatorship, under what we see communism, these guys are leashed. You cannot produce some kind of a product in China that is going to reduce the life of expectancy life of people. You can't give poison to people. You know, a lot of things. They'll stop it. So you say, oh, freedom is done. Yeah, you want to be free to do what? To exploit other people? That's not possible. So, There has to be, you know, a point that in between this uncontrolled freedom of the West, really, it's gone out of hand. It's like a toothpaste that you push it, it's out. It cannot put it back right now. People are what they are and they are towards the destruction of themselves and naturally their society. In China, this is leashed. China is a team. Government of China is the guardian of the people. The best government in the world for people. 
this system works there because there's 1.3 <coughs> billion population that not necessarily has to be applied in other places but in China that's the only solution right now compare China to India they're both populated country average Chinese are way better off than the people in India literally half of the population in India half a billion got of people they don't have even IDs they don't know how old they are they're living under fig trees they're literally Bedovians way worse even they're good people very spiritual but they haven't developed there's no way to because the capitalists an Indian capitalist is the most ruthless being in the entire universe. There's nothing worse than an Indian capitalist. They will go to the point of cruelty that people literally die and they will not budge a penny. So Mao system is way more economically, is way more greater than those of the Gandhi. I mean, the facts speak for itself. I don't have to even bring it up. So in that, you could see that the communism in China works better for people. This is, this is why they are where they are, you know. So, but eventually I prefer a country like Canada, a system like Canada. Where capitalism and free enterprise is there for populations, but the government is socialist, even if they are a conservative government. They're out there watching for the poor, for the Canadians that they can't do it, for the middle class. There can't be any country, any regime, any government in the world to be good if it is not a middle class country, government. U.S. is not. Barack Obama's system is trying to kill himself, but Republicans are out of whack. They don't understand it. They don't understand that they have to give, let it go of their money, like Bill Gates does. Because when you give the money to people, they just invigorate him, them, they become richer, they come and buy, buy it back from you. You know, but they like their system that's in Iran. Iran is one of the richest countries in the world. Natural resources and everything. But the capitalist does not understand there that he has to give taxes. The moment you say that you have to pay tax, they call you communist in Iran, in Turkey, in Jordan, in Egypt, in all the Muslim countries. In Canada, you have to pay taxes because there is health care, because there's lots of other things. So uh, I'm thinking and hoping that Chinese are moving towards this uh, system. I cannot have even one point of criticism towards the government of China. They're just doing a fantastic job of controlling the situation. Because remember, population, 1.3 billion. There are still people are starving, but by God, it is seriously a universal government. But there are room, there are room for improvement, everywhere there is. So if I were in the Chinese official, I would say, okay, us and Americans, in one way, we have taken a step away from religion. We chose science, this and that. American, they choose this freedom, <coughs> so-called. A freedom with no control where it goes, no boundary, and they've destroyed their family structures. Family structures needs dictatorship. It's very crazy, but it is. Because we cannot formulate a system by law, by science, for the people to love each other and be faithful to each other so they can raise their children. Only Christ can do that. Only Moses has done that. Only Buddha can do that. 
it's willingly signing off <coughs> your leash to God, your conscience, your heart. So, is it dictatorship within a family only, family structure, but by vote, by willingness, democratically, we have accepted to give our life to God, to His manifestation called Baha'u, which is a scientific religion, the first one in the history of mankind. And there are His dictations, His explanations, deservedly dictatorship, because God is way bigger than us. We can raise children now. Rest family. West has lost this opportunity because they're clinging to these past ideas. They thought science, well, you know, find its way, couldn't. The scientific messengers of the ethics is Hollywood, and their movies has destroyed the individual characters of people. In China, they've leashed on that, but for how long you can leash people? For how long you can? hold them together, to have this low rate of divorce, to have this rate of a high personality, all high characters. How long can we do this? So one of the things I would do if I was a Chinese, <coughs> part of the Chinese government, or if they would have asked me what I think, I would tell them that, you have a base, scientific based society. Look at it. Scientifically, mankind will get destroyed if it does not have mother and father. And the mother and the father have been, in the history of mankind, its evolution done by the prophets of God. Either create one that everybody in the world will accept it, or look at their evolution pattern, see what has been developed in the earth. Baha'i faith has developed in the earth by God for this. This God of the Baha'i faith is not a God of Christ or Christianity. It is a very well understandable God. He is like us, just bigger, that's all. What do we do as a kid? We look at a bigger guy and we know he does things and follow it. This God is intelligent like us, has willpower like us, but he's countless years bigger than us. So he knows where we are and what we have to do, isn't it? Once this is proven, I mean, you study Baha'i faith, I would, as a Chinese authority, as a Chinese government, say that mankind, evolution of mankind is going towards this way. This would be a religion that would be acceptable to all the people of the earth. Then use the opportunity, because you have the team. You're not a mass. Your country is the team. Everything is organized. Why don't you teach it? Not forcefully, as Baha'i Faith wants it, expose people to it. How fast they will embrace it in China. Chinese are so ready. Because they're starving. Government of China has kept by the means of Mao a cleansing system that has cleansed Mao with the Buddhism, Confucianism, and all those things of the past. But there's no replacement coming to govern the conscience, the conscience of people. So, in a way, it is dictatorship, but willingness by people. But the Baha'is marry. They do not need to think about whether they're going to cheat each other, have extra affair, marry, uh, marital affairs, or they're going to drink, they're going to do crime. They already signed as a Baha'i to their conscience, to their God. They're not going to do these things. So these are not the viruses that can penetrate the shield. The best things about it is that is universally acceptable already by all the people in our earth. Look at the laboratory of the universe. In 100 or 150 years, Baha'i Faith has spread all over the world. 
China has to move towards this very fast if they want to uh, go forward with this evolution that they have, you know. So, this understanding the Baha'i faith, but you know, after study it very well and bring it up to the government. <clears throat> the government of China could get all the Mongolian race, from Mongolia to Korea to Japan, even Philippines, Vietnam, Laos, Thailand, even Malaysia, which is a Muslim country, right to Burma, Tibets, everybody into one thinking. You could form the universal government right in the East. I'm asking the people of the Anglo-Saxon do it in the West. You guys could do it in the East. Great chance of doing it. Great opportunities, you know. And you are the people that your demands were not crazy, but Muslims or thanks God to teaching of Mao and Maoism and Communism has just cleansed this kind of absurd expectation and ideas from God, from prophets and all that. Scientific method. Go on and then you'll see. I put all those videos there to be, to be looking at it. So as for us in the West, as so much we talk of freedom, but our freedom is conditioned upon that you become like me. We like to convert people right away, even in friendship. I have to think like you, be like you, you know, then I will be acceptable. See, the freedom the Baha'i faith proposed is not like this. He says, I do not want to convert you. I want to relate myself to you. I want to be your friend. Our slogan is unity in diversity. We're not up here to make you to be me. But can you should not be me. We're both a pieces of jigsaw puzzles. We all need it to create this big picture of humanity. If you are like me, then we have two pieces of the same. It's not possible. So you have to be you. Christians, Muslims, new ones, whatever damn things you are. Homosexuals, bisexual, trisexuals, do anything you want. As long as you don't hurt mankind and possibly yourself, your ethics could be different. Sure. Our aim is not to convert you, it's to know who you are, see how we can connect ourselves to you, send message to you, and receive message from you. We believe. We have recognized this, that in the course of time, either you become like us or we become like you. Evolution is going toward progress, progressively. The one guy is smoking, one guy is not. They want to be friend. The smoker says, no, I can't be your friend unless you quit. A Baha'i says, no, I'm your friend. Go smoke. But I'm going to be friend. This friendship even firmer, very firm. In a few months, either this guy is going to smoke or that guy is going to quit. <clears throat> I was with my friend Lisa. She possibly had all kind of habits that could have come from the West, Western civilization, like everybody else. I never told her one thing to do. In the course of time, she has reached the height of sanity that, my God, she would not consume anything that's wrong. Doesn't mean meat. Just white meat. Fish, maybe. But I'll never ask her to do that. Why should I ask to do something when I'm here already? So I will be your friend, whoever you are, Baha'i Faith says, our characters and philosophies and personalities, let them fight. 
one will win. So we got to stop this pretend freedom in the West while we do not accept anything but our way. Why are these Republicans are so much against the Democrats in the US? Because you understand only one way. You got to be thinking like me, be like me, everything like me. If not, I'm going to get separated. This lesson has not been taught. If the government of China understands this, it's a very key element for the future of China and the world that China deals with, that ethical, spiritual matter deals with conscience has a great role in human development, which is family structure. There are no rules and no laws of any kind works except those of the heart and conscience. And if people of the earth have the same prime directive drawn towards all of them, then we will have a peaceful world, an easy to communicate world. A lot of unnecessary budgets and the money that has to go to you know, prevent a lot of things can just be remedied if you understand a scientific based religion ideology a TOE theory, theory of everything proposed by Baha'u'llah the manifestation of God if you understand the course of evolution by looking at it in the past 200 years and how far it's gone my friend in China you are on the winning trend. You will go. And your winning is no loss to anybody. It's a win-win situation for everyone. Those who do not understand, they are bound to get destroyed. There is no room. There is no Neanderthal. If you're a homo sapiens, you have to understand how to relate to other people. When I look at the history of China, when I look at these inventions and why not so much, I would strongly suggest that the government of China starts, please, to introduce yourself and your culture to all the people of the world. I love comics. Why don't you make comics? Right from the histories of the invention of Canada, uh, of China from the beginning. My God, there are a million things to learn. Make it so that the, the youth, children and adults all in a very concise pictor pictorial book, let them do it. In India they have done something called Amar Chitrakata. I used to read it when I was a College student, believe it or not, because I learned a lot of mythology from it, of Indians. But I always wished China would have done that, because theirs would be so magnificent. Concise, 40 pages. When was this made? When was that invented? Who was this dynasty? What are the good things that happened in the past? All of it. You're rich. How about making some serious movies? Not this uh, BS that comes from China. I'm talking some serious movies. Very realistic. But the Chinese history, but the Chinese people, this is just about the most industrious nations of all the people on the planet. Such an industrious nations. Ethical nations. Do not be disappointed of the people of the world. People of the world are ready to learn about China more. A Chinese government has done not a very good job about that. A 
dressed as free. Why don't you do these things? Make great movies. Make comics. Pictorial. Books. So explain it. Don't make it too big. Make it as small. Just like comics. Series. We have a uh, uh, network, well, the news network all over the world. They have their own networks, you know. Al Jazeera from Qatar. Why can China have their news network? Right in the West. Why not make money in the beginning? But let people to know. People deserve to know how many inventors have been in China, how many scientists have been in China, what are the things that made in China, what are the great ethical story was in China, what are the mythologies in China, or who are the great reformers that brought China to where it is right now, what happened, who was Sun Yat-sen, who was Chiang Kai-shek, was Mao and so many thousands of others. Bring them up. Past and future. So I speak to you as a human being. I have no tendency towards the West or East. I see mankind as one. And I'm fortunate to say what I think is right because I do not seek to be famous. I abhor it. I do not want to have money made out of this. I would appreciate to have more money, but not by talking and telling the truth of this kind of thing. There's no way in the world I would get engaged in it. I'm the elder of God, uh, work for Baha'u'llah. Uh, people of the West and Iran and others they have not paid no attention to me. And I don't have the means and the money to speak decent Chinese to you. But I'm sure you are uh, scouting the West. All the Chinese descent people that they listen to these things. Go translate it. Make this uh, YouTube video in, in, in Chinese. Let people to look at it. I do not like to infiltrate the Chinese uh, nations on my own. I don't like this. Because China has a leader and is a boss proven to protect their people and that's their government. So I think things has to be uh, suggested to the government, the government of the people, you know, republic, and see what they think and gradually merge into the world, you know. You're very shy. Gotta do something about it. Very well, my friend, this is one of the things that I have to do. Uh, to the list of my disease and sicknesses, I think now, I, I feel I have blood pressure even tonight, I feel it. So what else is coming, I don't know. All I know is that after 50s, you're not living every day, you're dying every day. But that's good, it's no problem the world of the software. May God and the truth be with you.